Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Are you ready? Get ready, dog. Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what ought to be a great matchup between the Green Bay Packers and the Los Angeles Rams. Kickoff is moments away, so let's get you out to our commentator. And standing by for the call are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. On a pretty gray and hazy day here in Southern California, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Los Angeles. The City of Angels showing it can be loud and raucous. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad emerged from the tunnel. They're ready for football and ready to watch their Rams do battle with the Green Bay Packers. Brandon Gordon and Charles Davis on hand. Kickoff just moments away. Charles quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best going into this one to give them the confidence to believe that they would win the game? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. kicker Mason Crosby set to do the honors here and we are underway here in Los Angeles that's fielded in the end zone and no run back here this will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25 yard line here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley and not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. The throw over the middle taken in. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you go lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. From the 50, it's gone. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Tyler Irvin back deep. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at the 20. Shotgun now for Rodgers. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. No, no, no. 
After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. To throw again, Rodgers into a double team and it's intercepted. Picked off at about the 31. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. Line of scrimmage in the 31 now on first and 10. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. 42 is the mark, boys. 42. 42 is the mark. Here we go. And he'll lose yardage. Brought down at the 32. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Huh? Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. It kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if the, oh, they get to the football, it's blocked. So the next time we leave one of those coaches' meetings and, and we're walking out in the hall and you're like, how come we spend so much time talking about special teams? Here you go. This is why. This is why, right? And look, I'm, I'm right there with you. We hear it every time we meet with the coaches, but it is a big part of it. And look at how early in the game this occurs. They block a kick, and not only does it set a tone, it sends a message for the rest of the game. Yeah, so much for our first points of the game. Now the man from UTEP, this is Aaron Jones. And he'll get this across the 40 and up to about the 42-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. On second down, it's Jones. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. All right, Brand, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. The Rams calling on their nickel set here defensively for third down. From the gun, it's Rodgers. Open man is Allison complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 14 yards, good for a Packer first down. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality and pound the rock. A well, first carry now for the BYU man. It's Jamal Williams, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. They'll try and run it in with Jones. And a second effort gets him in. Touchdown, Packers. Taking it in from two yards out as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments. Let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking. Beats good tackling on that play. End result, touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. 
That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Now Goff on first down. He'll get this complete to Cooper Cup. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Ball on the 30. They'll come up with a second and five. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Throwing again on second down. Goff. And some space here. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. Woods, the intended receiver. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Watch tight end. Watch tight end. Tight end's right. Tight end's right. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. It's a gain of 16 and a first down for the green and gold. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". Now a draw play. This is Jones. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Doesn't take any great analysis on my part. It's been pretty obvious. Last couple plays, these guys have been going in the wrong direction. Offensive line overwhelmed on those plays. Now, I think it's safe to say going to the air here on third. Throwing his Rodgers on third down. Looking for the touchdown, Packers. Geronimo Allison, 28 yards. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. Extra point up and good by Crosby. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. So that drive, four plays. And the result, a Green Bay score. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again here, Robert Woods marches back onto the field. A chance maybe here for them to get him more involved. They're down here on the scoreboard, and he's been very quiet. And the silence has been deafening for his team. They don't need that at all. They need fireworks. They need explosive plays. They need him touching the football in any way possible. Maybe go to some jet sweeps. Anything to get him going. Something to get in the ball. We'll see if they can do it. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And an alley to run! And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Meanwhile, Goff to Gurley as he drops it off for his running back. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after, and it's third down. Throwing on third, gone. And this is going to be incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. 
So a good kick that time, and that might help to get the negative thoughts out of the mind from that earlier block. Especially since this was not a chippy, so he had to get that one out kind of low. But his line does a nice job of protecting, and he's able to convert for three. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Devontae Adams in the Packer offense heading back out. Not only does he not have a catch, I don't, I don't think he's been targeted in this game, but they're winning. And if you ask a receiver of his magnitude, he'll tell you that it's because everyone is focused on him anyway. Okay, you've taken it away. No catches, no targets, but we're still winning. I've opened things up for the rest of my team. I know how receivers play. <laughs> They've been using him as a decoy, and effectively so. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Off the draw, here's Williams. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the gun on third down, Rodgers. And Adams has it, complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 11 yards and a Green Bay Packer first down. All right, let's just go ahead and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. Give him five on the carry there and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. 158 left to play till we hit halftime. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight and moves the chains. They stick to the ground game on first down. It's Williams. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Rodgers gives this to Jamal Williams. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Now Williams. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one... He looked like one of those guys. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now gone, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Here's gone, and the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. A good job in the passing game, decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. You can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. 
So we have reached halftime. And just like that, on we head to half number two. So it's the Packers set to receive the kick. They've got the lead as well as we are underway in the third quarter. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 22. Shotgun now for Rodgers. Got his man, it's Williams. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So the defense blitzed. A nice job picking that up, completing the pass. And how in sync was the quarterback in his center on that play? They saw the blitz, made the appropriate calls, got the line engaged because now they know there are going to be extra guys coming at the quarterback. So they got their assignments down pat and kept them away from him. And he's able to step up in the pocket and fire one now for a really good strike. Again, it's Williams. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instinct. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed out hard there. He was ready for that running play. Now Rodgers. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Now the attention turns back to the Rams offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, here's Gall. He gets it to Cooks. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Slant route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Here's Gall. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead. Pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? But you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing. Get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Down here in the third quarter, obviously that's one they could have used. Yeah, one of my favorite special teams coaches in the NFL told me, what separates the kickers in the NFL versus the ones who are not is not the misses. It's the second miss in a row. Best kickers in the league. They don't miss two in a row. He's got to get his head back together in case he gets another shot. Rodgers now on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. 
Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And Forcey and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going into the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Williams. And he gets this to the 48, but no further. Well short of the line to gain. Two yards on the pick up there. It's fourth down. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised him a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped him well short of a first down. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. Again, they run with Gurley. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. Goff now. Just 7 of 16 passing thus far, but he's got a first and 10. A shotgun snap for goal. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. A good pickup, 17 yards, and also a Rams first down. Goff now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. Back now in Los Angeles. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. Delayed give, golf to Gurley. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. From the 38, golf. And he'll find his target, Woods. It's complete. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 21. On first and 10, gone. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. They went with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Second and ten, golf again. Now that'll be caught by Cup. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a gain of 11 and a first down LA. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. Goff going to hand it to Gurley. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. Under four to play now. Clock running, third down. Now it's gone. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Zadarius Smith with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. They get the sack on the blitz, but it was third and inches. Are you surprised like I am they weren't running the football there? I'm right there with you. I would have thought it worst. Quarterback sneak, try and pick up the first down and move on. But instead, I think they thought they could catch him by surprise and maybe hit something deep. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. And there's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. And now the Packers get set to go. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays that are going to gain yardage 
how would you say it, consistent way, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. On second down, it's Jones, and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Let's go! It's a gain of 12, and the Packers have the first. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. They stay on the ground. This time it's Williams. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. After the penalty, it's Jones. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. the delay Jones and some nice running gonna get him down close to a first down at the Rams 26 the offense on third down today they've hit four of seven they're looking at third and a few inches fourth quarter down to the final two minutes and we've got a one score game so it's Packer football here as we welcome you back they're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Jones, and he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Rodgers with a give. It's Aaron Jones. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. This is Jones. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Here's Jones. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football and I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I don't want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw, out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And that will extend their lead here to 17-6. So barring something extraordinary here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Yeah, we've got to find two scores. So, you know, we're not going to exactly move it over there yet. It can be done, but boy, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch for them, isn't it? Yeah, they would have to move incredibly quick and have some luck, too. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So Jared Goff in the offense. Down by 11, 55 seconds remaining. Goff now looks to throw. Dumps it off to Gurley. And they work this well upfield across the 45. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. Now gone. They'll throw underneath for Gurley. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches. And they're trying to create one there. Getting it to their back out of the backfield.
make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his lane. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker, or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to